If you're building a new gaming PC, one of the most tricky decisions you'll have to make is just how much money you want to spend on your new config. And while in an ideal world we'd all have an unlimited budget for a 4090 and an i9 powered system, life isn't that easy or that simple sadly. So how much do you need to spend for strong 1080p, 1440p and 4k gaming performance and just how much should you try and spend on your next rig? In this video I'll be answering that question once and for all and also talking through areas where you can save and strategically spend a bit more money for the most optimal performance. Let's do this. The Corsair Xenion 32 inch gaming monitor is a panel that packs a punch, bringing your games and media to life on a vibrant ultra slim 32 inch IPS 4K display is a panel with some power. What's more, the fast 144 hertz refresh rate and nippy one millisecond response time ensure you can keep a competitive edge. Learn more about the Xenion 32 UHD 144 at the first links in the description below and buy now on the Corsair web store. There are a number of different driving forces between how much money a gaming PC is going to cost you and that is where this comes in. No, not my MacBook, the websites that are located on it. Because the first thing, ah, so good job there's no CPU in there, eh? Because the first thing we're going to do is look at CPU and GPU pricing. These are two of the biggest components in any gaming system and are the driving force behind perhaps how much it's going to cost. Recent years have seen much drama around GPU and CPU pricing, drama that has thankfully died down a little bit and should give us a clear indication of how much money we need to spend. Now as a typical rule of thumb, the graphics card should make up anywhere from 35 to 50% of a build budget. Now what that means is that say you buy a $500 graphics card, you'll then need to spend between $500 and $700 on all the other components to get the optimal performance. If you can't quite afford to spend $1,200 on a build, spend less on the GPU and scale everything down proportionally. Now in terms of graphics cards, there's a few different options that I'd recommend as the minimum viable choice for 1080, 1440p and 4K. At 1080p you've got something like AMD's RX 6600 and Nvidia's 3050. At 1440p you've got the Nvidia RTX 3060 Ti and AMD's Radeon RX 6750 XT. While at 4K I'd recommend at least a 3080 but preferably a newer 4080 or AMD's equivalent 7900 XT. They are going to be my recommended specs for each of those builds. So I suppose the first thing we should probably do is take a look at how much each of these GPUs cost. Now let me start by looking at the RX 6600 to begin with. I'm using by the way a website called Just GPU, it's owned by Newegg for the pricing and I'll link all up-to-date pricing info for the parts I talk about down below. An RX 6600 then on Just GPU is going to clock anywhere from 220 to 259. Step up to the slightly better and I would recommend 6650 XT and you're looking around the $300 mark. Now taking our rule of thumb into account that means a $300 build is going to set you back between $800 and $850. That is only taken, for example, into consideration a basic config with 16 gigs of RAM, a mid-range CPU, and a budget case. Choose to spend more on aesthetic features like fancy light-up memory, a case with loads of integrated features, and extra storage for your huge Steam library that you should probably just go and delete it for goodness sake. You've not played any of those games in eight. Anyway, you will have to spend more money. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. A 1080p build then you can assemble realistically for about $850 but I'd recommend spending in the region of a thousand. A thousand dollars will allow for more future proofing, more on that later, and it will also allow for a better build overall. One that's quieter, has better temperatures, and is just gonna last you that little bit longer. Now let's say then we want to step up to a 1440p system, and let's take a look at Nvidia's 3060 Ti and AMD's RX 6750 XT. The two cards that I would say provide the minimum viable performance for 1440p gaming. Now as we go up the list, one thing that you will probably find is that you have to spend more money proportional to the graphics card on the rest of the system with higher end builds. Now what I mean by that is if you're building a budget gaming PC, you want the graphics card to take up as much of that chunk of money as possible. Something which is achievable using budget CPUs, budget motherboards and low amounts of memory. On higher end builds like a 1440p config for, I don't know, $1,500, that's not quite the case. A scrimp out too much on the CPU and memory and you'll end up bottlenecking the GPU 
GPU, essentially restricting its maximum performance because you didn't plan the other parts correctly. Take a look then at this config and the cheapest 3060 Ti that we can find on just GPU if we search by lowest to highest price comes in at $380. Now, to be clear, that's one card. The next card up's 400, the one after that's 420. And I'm not necessarily suggesting you go online and buy the very cheapest 6750 XT you can find. It might not fit your build budget, it might not fit your aesthetic, or it might not even fit in the bloody case that you've gone for, for heaven's sake. So let's go a little bit more mid-range. Let's take a $420 card as a better example. For that money, you'd be able to pick between either of our 1440p recommendations and also get one that looks, well, I mean, A, half decent, and B, how you want it. With that in mind, you're then gonna want to spend another, I would say, $800 in this price range to get something that's gonna deliver the good performance the GPU needs. 32 gigabytes of memory, a 750 watt power supply, and a case with enough airflow to keep the card cool. On a budget though, you could certainly assemble a system for 1440p gaming under $1,200. Now, before I move on to our high-end configs, our recommended 4K price points for builds, there are a few things I ought to mention. If you're looking to stream or edit videos on your system or use it for high-intensity, productivity-based tasks, you want to pop the CPU up a level. All of these budgets account for a gaming-only config. And to get better productivity performance, you want a higher-end CPU and a bit more memory. On a cheap build, that's going to add, let's say, $200 at the lowest level, whereas on a mid-range or high-end build, it might add three, 350 or even 400 US dollars to the overall amount you need to spend. So budding Twitch streamers out there, make sure you spend a little bit more cash to achieve solid performance. I also want to touch briefly on the word future-proofing. I talked about that earlier. It's a dangerous word because we never know, well, we never know what the future holds, really. But there are still ways you can mitigate potential effects of time passing by and, of course, the future. It's getting quite philosophical, this video, isn't it, really? The one way you can do that is by, say, going for DDR5 rather than DDR4 memory. That's the newest standard that's in date and allows for better upgrades. You can spend more money on a faster SSD, like a Gen 4 rather than a Gen 3 NVMe. Pick up a power supply with some extra wattage or a case big enough to support those chunky next-gen GPUs, even if, for now, you're only planning on popping in something cheaper, like a 3060. These are all ways where you can spend a bit more cash, get a bit more performance, and future-proof yourself. But never, please, Please never spend hundreds of dollars, especially on the low end, trying to future-proof a build. The best thing to do is build the best system you can right now, and the chances are it's going to last a few years anyway, by which point you might as well just build a new PC from scratch, because of course the stuff you've got will be so old and out of date, it's probably not worth trying to upgrade that anyway. But what if you've got a lot of money to spend, or what if you want 4K performance without necessarily getting your checkbook out and writing a blank check to the bank of Newegg? Well, there are a few options. Now, 4K gaming, I'd recommend recommend, let's say, an RTX 4070 at minimum. I would also recommend maybe not a 7900 XT. That seems a bit overkill, but let's say a 6900 or a 6950 XT. The very cheapest options come in at just under 600 US dollars, but let's take this MSI Gaming X Trio design for 650 as the use case here. You could probably get away with spending only another 700 US dollars or so on the rest of the parts, a mid-range i5 CPU, a B760 motherboard, and a practical high air low case choice that doesn't need to break the bank. That means a build for the $1,300 to $1,500 price point would be feasible, leveraging a GPU like the 4070. But let's bear in mind the RTX 4070 isn't the highest end 4K graphics card around. And naturally, while still very competitive, isn't going to be as good as something like a 4080 or a 7900 XT in next-gen games. 4K has always been a bit of a red herring for me in the sense that it really depends on what you play, which is my next piece of advice. Take the rule that I've applied in this video that the GPU should comprise of 35 to 50 percent of a build's budget and go over to geekawart.com and check out our benchmarks of all the latest GPUs. That will then allow you to find cards that perform well in the games you want to play as that's ultimately the biggest determining factor as to how much to spend. But I understand that these sort of hypothetical scenarios can be annoying as a viewer. James, as we round off the video, give me a definitive answer. How much should I spend? For a 1080p build that's basic and provides entry-level performance, you'll need it $750. For a 1080p build with a little bit more oomph, capable of maxing out settings more frequently and hitting the 60, 100 or even higher frame rate marks, you'll want to spend $1,200. Game at 1440p and the $1,500 price point is entry level, while a 4K build can be achieved for $1,800 but is more realistically purchasable with a better balanced config for the $2,000 mark. You really don't have to spend a fortune on a gaming PC to get good performance, but equally don't waste money trying to future-proof something that, let's be honest, you're never going to 
final upgrade anyway. I'll link all the parts mentioned today down at the affiliate links below. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to drop a like rating. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.